Hello friends. So, uh, hi, this is uh, Mayank Kulshrisht and uh, uh, sorry guys for uh, not making the videos in the series uh, for a long time since I was uh, facing some issues with my health and uh, and even uh, about the content also it was not ready so it took some time for me to prepare the content and now I'm ready with the, the next set of lectures. So this one will be having, uh, let me just start with the slideshow. So uh, basically, uh, prior to these uh, uh, series, I was explaining about uh, the basics of diameter-based protocol, where I explained uh, how uh, what are the different different uh, layers in a OSI reference model, and where uh, this diameter-based protocol lies, and what are the uh, uh, transport layer protocols supporting the diameter stack like uh, TCP and HTTP and the basic call flow which I showed you. So this uh, lecture will be having the information about uh, the uh, the APC architecture, basically our data architecture, what are the nodes involved in it and what are the interfaces between it and as per 3GPP standards, uh, what has been uh, you know, uh, uh, set as a as interface specifications. And I'll also show you the references wherein I have referred uh, while making this content. Okay, we'll be discussing about GX, GY and SY and the data call flow. And I will be explaining a bit about how a product looks like. Means, uh, you know, we are talking about charging and all those things. For what we are charging, we are basically charging for the products and the services. So, a little bit uh, brief about those things. So, without wasting the time, let's start with the second slide. So, okay. Uh, so, this is all how I showed you in the last few lectures, like. Uh, um, uh, how, how, how it is how the diameter stack looks like like we have Mac layer then IP layer then SCTP SCTP and TCP supporting the uh, transport layer and then at the top is the application layer where our diameter protocol lies on and I even explained you about the radius protocol uh, which was the predecessor of uh, you know uh, the diameter protocol so okay so even um, uh, came across many times I found that people who are in from charging billing domain they don't know much about the LT architecture but uh, uh, guys I think uh, this is a very important uh, uh, this is very very important actually if you are a telecom professional you should be knowing the uh, architecture properly so uh, let's just uh, will not waste much time on the architecture because you know there are many sources on YouTube you can search and uh, search by LT architecture you will get the lectures in Hindi English and any other language also so it's not a, a big problem searching the content but yes knowing the content is important so yes I'm telling you that you should know this thing so I'm um, quickly explaining that uh, you know uh, in our LT architecture we have our uh, let me just start laser pointer yeah so this is our ue means our mobile handset so mobile handset uh, when connects to the nearest uh, antenna which is called as e node b okay and uh, this is the interface between them uu interface okay so interviewer mostly asked this question so uh, between the e node b's there is x2 interface for inter e node b handovers okay so we are basically in a 4g world which we also called as lte so prior to 4G, 3G, there was so many net, uh, network elements in EUTRAN. EUTRAN is basically your RAN part, which we call it in 2G and 3G. In 4G, we call it as a EUTRAN. Okay, evolved EUTRAN. Okay, universal terrestrial radio access network. Okay, so but now in 4G, we don't have those kind of extra elements in the network architecture. So we have just E node B's, and E node B's are very smart. They manage the inter handovers very easily. So they uh, they themselves acts as a BTS, BSC, and uh, uh, yeah, BS, BSC and BT, uh, BTS and BSC both. Okay, so you just want to know as a you know billing charging engineer, you must just should know about the nodes and the interfaces between them, and then starting from EU trend towards EPC, which is the heart of the telecom you know architecture, which is uh, enhanced packet core. So enhanced packet core is consisting of multiple network elements like MME, Mobility Management Entity, HSS, the home location register, which is similar to 3G uh, HLR. Then we have PCRF, we have OCS. OCS is not mentioned here, but uh, it's a part of APC core. So core is basically the heart of the system. So OCS, of course, is the heart of our system because all the business logics, tariffs and all charging billing letter informations are in OCS and billing system. So OCS comes and OCS and billing both comes in EPC. 
So we have SGW and PGW. So these are all interfaces. You can see MME and HSS. This is a S6 interface. Why I'm mentioning S6 specifically because S6 is again a diameter based interface. Okay. So then we have uh, Enode V2 SGW, which is S1U interface. And uh, there is a difference between U and C. So U is a user plane, C is a control plane. So control plane is basically used for signaling. And in this diagram, you can see all the dotted lines means S1 MME, S6A, S11, GX. You can see all these dot dotted lines are the signaling interfaces, means uh, signaling happens in this one. Uh, whereas the user interface, uh, the user plane is the plane where actual traffic flows, okay? So uh, since all of you must be from the telecom background, or even if not, then I'll tell you like, you know, uh, signaling, signaling is more important in wireless communication because we want to know the location of the subscriber, we want to know the services subscribe to subscriber barring and barring information so prior to establishing the traffic it is Im more important to establish the control plane okay uh, means basically the signaling okay so this is how architecture looks like so we'll just skip this slide so this is how you know um, the traditional networks uh, works in conjunction with the LTE networks. So you can see all these interfaces supporting because you know right now all the are in 4G even we started with the 5G we have to be compatible with the old networks also. This is this was actually the requirement from the operators and that's the reason such interfaces has been created which actually helps in uh, you know uh, working uh, with other networks like EU TRAN and GRAN means to, GRAN stands for 2G basically and EU TRAN is uh, our 3G uh, sorry EU TRAN is 3G and EU TRAN is 4G okay so I'll just skip this slide as well okay now this is uh, this is the important slide so from here itself we will basically talk specifically about the SY interface the GY interface and the GX interface so just for your information SY interface is uh, basically used uh, between uh, the our PCRF and the OCS and this this interface is basically designed it is again a diameter uh, base uh, the base protocol is diameter only but SY is an interface it means the application which is specifically designed for uh, policy exchange between the PCRF and the OCS okay so basically PCRF holds the policy information while OCS inform, um, holds the account information and uh, PCRF needs the account related information from the OCS for that this SY interface is being designed and it's used. GX interface is between our PCEF and the PCRF and it is used to you know um, to support the PCC rules. Uh, so basically whenever a PCRF knows the PCC rules that needs to be uh, enforced basically that needs to be enforced for, on the subscriber but the node which actually enforce the PCC rule is the PCEF but PCEF doesn't have these kind of information so it uses GX interface in order to talk to PCRF then PCRF in turn takes some of the information from the OCS and then combines that all combines uh, and helps the PCRF to, uh, to, to decide a uh, uh, the PCC rules and that PCC rule goes to PCF and then PCF applies that PCC rule. So basically in a very common man language, I can tell you that uh, uh, policy is nothing, it's a speed. What kind of speed, what kind of quality I have to give you while you are browsing, while you are doing a voice call, voltage call. Okay, so, so basically policy is equals to speed, quality. Okay, whereas the GY interface is specifically meant for charging. Charging means charging of money, charging of quota. Quota basically the word we use when we talk about data charging because data, I think nowadays even a normal person also you says how much quota is left, how much quota is there. So quota is basically nothing, you know, your data units, let's say 10 GB quota. I have used 8 GB out of 10 GB. So all these quota related debit credit happens between the OCS and the PCF. PCEF okay so these three interfaces mainly we'll talk about in this uh, uh, lecture okay so moving towards how actually the architecture looks like we have several other network elements like we have SGSN GGSN and the GN interfaces between them then we have PCRF and UDR UD interfaces there sometimes we have a external SPR which is connected to PCRF to get the count related information we don't have, uh, sometimes we don't have OCS in this case. So SP interface is used to get OCS related kind of information which is stored on the SPR. Okay, from the, uh, by the PCRF. And if we have OCS, then yes, I, as I told, we have SY interface, then PCEF and OCS, we have GY interface. And uh, 
this is mediation is also there but uh, I, I actually i was supposed to remove this uh, node because you know mediation is connected to almost all the network elements because mediation is the node which collects the cdr or maybe the node send the cdrs to this node and this node is actually uh, decoding those cdrs and then sending it to the downstreams like the our billing systems and then basically the data warehouse fraud system revenue assurance systems all those things okay so and yes we have ims network element which the most two important nodes in ims network element which are actually connected to our pcrf and ocs is our pcscf which we also call it as application function so this application function or pcscf is connected to pcrf through rx interface whereas the tas which is a telephony application server is connected to our ocs through ro interface okay so uh, this is how um, this is my own diagram which i've created just to you know uh, i don't want to miss things uh, because if i go to 3gpp documentation it's a very big uh, network and uh, diagram and you will be confused although it is also not uh, that much simplified at all it is also messy that's the reason in the previous slide i showed you this diagram this is because we will be mainly talking about this interfaces and call flows so let's move so again i have just given a you know, refresher about the last things which we discussed we discussed about how what is diameter what is lt triple a pcrf hss so let's skip this slide as well so okay so um, all of you be knowing about the pcf pcf basically stands for post policy and charging enforcement function so friends basically pcef is the actual node which which is in charge of allowing or disallowing the traffic towards subscriber or not okay but you know in this modern world we cannot put every functionality on pcf okay we can't put the functionality of ocs inside pcf and pcrf also in inside pcef and then just have one box in the network no this is not good so that's the reason every box have different different functionality so pcef is the actual node which is responsible for enforcing the policy but in order to know what policy to be enforced on uh, you know the subscriber pcef has to contact the pcrf and pcrf also have the rules but for knowing the rule status of each and every policy counter pcrf has to contact ocs and ocs will give the counter statuses because ocs has the account information of the subscriber which is dynamic and the real time and this is how uh, these different different uh, uh, and network elements are contacting each other and getting information from each other but they're all the all of them purpose is that to give the real time information real time charging real time policy control all those things why we call real time because you know within a fraction of settings uh, seconds we are doing all those things okay systems are doing all those things and yes pc pcf generates a cdrs i'll also show you how cdr looks like a very small look i'll show you after uh, this slide so and ocs you all guys know very well so ocs is a very is a system is a very integral means very important part of a bss domain bss means the business support subsystem uh, which is actually responsible for money related information quota related information what subscriber what packages bundles subscribers are having what is the quota left on the subscriber profile so subscribers are actually provisioned in on ocs and all the account related details of the subscribers resides in the ocs okay so let's start with okay yeah. so prior uh, moving towards the call flow and all those things i just want to show you a glimpse of how uh, what is actually the product because you know what what uh, whatever we are talking right right now is related to you know charging some data offers and all those things quota apn all those things but you know what is it actually what is the thing which we are uh, you know which is attached to the subscriber and subscriber is due to that thing subscriber is using these services so there are two things product and services so these terms are interchangeably used in sometimes by the by different different uh, organizations or operators so don't confuse in it, in it but just try to grasp the conceptual information about what is product so pro product is basically a logical or maybe a physical entity which can be sold out by a end customer uh, to the end customer by the operator so we generally go to the store um, or airtel store or any other operator store and we say okay i we, i want to buy a mobile phone i want to buy a sim cards and i want to have some services like voice data something like that so you can see all this information which i have written here mobile phone internet connection voice call vpn video on demand digital tv connection so all these are the products few of them are physical products few of them are virtual products virtual means see voice call connection have you seen voice call connection no 
it is inside your sim card how sim card connects to your bts then it, you make a call it is, it is all virtual you can't see it okay so uh, physical and logical entity both are present in a product okay and now a product okay of course i am giving you a product i am giving you a service and i will charge you okay guys actually there is a limitation i can record only 15 minutes video so i have to reduce this video uh, i'm just stopping here we'll continue on the next lecture